morning dear students in today's lecture we will study how the diffraction of x rays by crystals is helpful in determination of the internal structure of the crystals we very well know on the basis of external shape or geometry the crystals have been divided into seven type of crystal systems and 14 types of bravis lattices now in today's lecture we will see how the diffraction of x rays by crystals is highly useful method for determining the internal structure and dimensions of the crystals so there are various methods of x ray diffraction by crystals which we will discuss one by one here the first one is lewis method as it was found that a crystal consists of a large number of atoms or ions arranged in an ordered manner and atomic planes in the crystals are separated by the distances of same order as the wavelength of the x rays it was found that the atomic planes in the crystals are separated by a distance of order of 10 to the power minus 8 cm which is same the order of wavelength of x rays so it was suggested by max von liew in 1912 that the crystal could act as a three dimensional diffraction grating for incident x rays as the order of distance between the atomic plane is same to the order of the wavelength of the x rays that's why he suggested that the crystal should act as a three dimensional diffraction grating for incident x rays so he suggested if x rays are allowed to strike the crystal the rays will penetrate into the crystal and will be scattered by the electrons of atoms or ions present in the crystal and these reflected rays from different layer of atoms or you can say these reflected rays from different planes of atoms due to wave nature will then undergo constructive or destructive interference to produce a diffraction pattern what we are saying here the lewis suggested that if x rays are allowed to strike the crystal the rays will penetrate into the crystal and will be scattered by the electrons or atom electrons of atom or ions present in the crystal and these reflected rays will further undergo interference this interference may be either constructive or destructive to produce a diffraction pattern so this idea of liu was put to experimental test and it was found to be true in actual experimentally they also got a diffraction pattern so what was done in the experiment a continuous beam of x rays having a wide range of wavelengths in which there is a wide range of wavelength was made incident on the crystal the x rays reflected from various plane of the crystal then undergo interference to produce diffraction pattern as we can see here we are getting here the diffraction pattern when the x rays are incident on the crystal now the diffraction pattern is recorded on a photographic film placed behind the crystal a photographic film was placed behind this crystal and it was found a diffraction pattern was obtained now what type of diffraction pattern was obtained in lewis method the developed film showed a series of spots arranged in a symmetrical pattern around the central beam these spots are known as lewis spot and this diagram is highly characteristic of the internal structure of the crystal the pattern obtained that was obtained by lewis experiment which was the pattern of lewis spot that pattern was highly characteristic of the internal structure of the crystal from the position of these lewis spots the size and shape of unit cell can be determined but what was found that analysis or interpretation of this lewis diagram was quite difficult it was not easily interpreted or analyzed by them 
so the scientists thought there should be some another method which is easier in which way we are getting the x-ray diffraction pattern that is easy to interpret or analyze now next method was suggested by a scientist named Bragg. Uh, this method was much simpler approach and was put forwarded by W. H. Bragg. He proposed that a crystal is composed of a series of equidistant parallel planes and these parallel planes are acting as a reflection grating for incident x-rays. So what was suggested by Bragg? For a given stack of planes, the reflection of x-rays will occur only at certain angles and these angles will be determined by the wavelength of the x-rays and the perpendicular distance between the adjacent planes. Now what is the principle of Bragg's method? The Bragg's method for study of internal structure of crystal was based upon Bragg's equation which was put forward by W. Bragg in 1919 and this may be derived as follows. A crystal may be considered to be made up of a number of parallel equidistant atomic planes as represented by lines xx dash, yy dash, zz dash etc. As we can see in the next slide. It was uh, suggested by Bragg, the crystal is composed of a number of equidistant parallel planes and these planes were designated as xx dash, yy dash and zz dash. These are equidistant parallel planes. The horizontal lines representing here the plane of crystal separated by distance d. Now suppose a beam of x-rays of wavelength lambda is incident on the crystal at an angle theta. At an angle theta, a beam of x-rays was incident on this crystal, on these planes. Now the plane ADG, this plane ADG is perpendicular to the incident beam of x-rays. Whereas plane CFL is perpendicular to the reflected beam. Now the ray AB, a part of this beam, this complete beam, a part of this beam in which we are considering about ray AB. We are discussing about here ray AB. The ray AB is reflected at point B along the path BC. Now the angle of incidence will be equal to the angle of reflection. So this angle will also be equal to theta. So ray AB is reflected at point B along the path BC. Now some of the rays like D, E, G, H, they will penetrate into the crystal and then they are reflected by the internal planes of the crystal like Y, Y dash and Z, Z dash. Now as compared to ray A, B, this one is the ray A, B, the ray like D, E has to travel a longer distance. And that is equal to J E K in order to emerge out of the crystal. If we are comparing D E and A B, you will see this D E ray has to travel an extra distance equal to J E K to emerge out of the crystal. Here B J and B K are perpendicular drawns on line. D, E and E, F. Now the reflected beams like B, C and E, F will undergo interference with each other. These reflected beams will undergo interference with each other. Now if the reflected rays, they are in phase like this. If they are in phase, Crest is falling over crest and trough is falling over trough. This is trough and this is crest. Then they will reinforce into each other. But if these will be out of phase, in this case they will cancel out each other. So constructive interface takes place, then the intensity of reflected ray will be maximum. Whereas if reflected rays are out of phase, then there will be destructive interference and the intensity of reflected ray will be very low. 
so what we are saying here these rays are incident on the crystal and the reflected rays are undergoing interference with each other if this interference is in phase in that case intensity of reflected ray will be maximum if the interference is destructive out of phase then the reflected ray will be of very low intensity so if a photographic plate is placed to receive these reflected rays we will see a diffraction pattern in which there will be maxima and minima maxima corresponding to constructive interference and minima corresponding to destructive interference now for reflected rays bc and ef to be in phase what condition should it uh, should it follow the extra distance jek that should be an integral multiple of wavelength of x rays for constructive interference to take place this extra distance je plus ek must be an integral multiple of wavelength of the x rays where n is an integer 1 2 3 4 etc so what we can say here the distance d between the successive planes which is equal to d we which we have denoted by the symbol d here then we will have this je is equal to d sin theta similarly ek is equal to d sin theta if we consider these two triangles bej and bek we will see sin theta is equal to perpendicular divided by hypotenuse and perpendicular here is je so sin theta is equal to je by be where be is equal to d so sin theta is equal to je by d so we can say je is equal to d sin theta similarly ek is equal to d sin theta so adding these two we are getting the total extra distance or extra path traveled by the ray de and that is equal to 2d sin theta now for constructive interference to take place this extra distance traveled by the ray must be an integral multiple of lambda so we must have here 2d sin theta is equal to n lambda and this is known as bragg's equation for condition of constructive interference in diffraction pattern we must have 2d sin theta is equal to n lambda now this theta is known as bragg angle and n is the order of reflection these two are giving us here this equation this equation is giving us here the condition under which the reflected beam will have maximum intensity now the reflection corresponding to n equal to 1 is known as first order reflection similarly reflection corresponding to n equal to 2 is known as second order reflection and so on now if we talk about a particular set of planes for a particular set of planes d will be constant and if we are using monochromatic x rays then lambda is also constant so by increasing the value of theta substituting in this equation increasing the value of theta we will get a number of theta values corresponding to n equal to 1 2 3 4 where the intensity of reflected beam is maximum and these positions are corresponding to diffraction maxima of first order second order third order fourth order and respectively so corresponding to n equal to 1 we will get first order diffraction maxima corresponding to n equal to 2 we are getting second order diffraction maxima corresponding to n equal to 3 we are getting third order diffraction maxima and so on so corresponding to these particular values we are getting diffraction maxima for other values of theta which is not satisfying this equation 2d sin theta equal to n lambda for those values of theta the reflected beam will have less intensity than the 
maximum. So in that case, we are getting minima. So a diffraction pattern will be obtained. Now measuring the angle theta at which the first maximum occurs so that we can put the value of n equal to 1 in that equation and knowing the wavelength lambda, the value of d can be calculated. Putting in this equation the value of theta and n equal to 1 and if we know the lambda, then we can easily find out the value of d. So, we can find out interplanar distance between the parallel planes by which the x-ray are getting reflected. Now this is the diagram in which diffraction maxima of first order, second order, third order all are shown here. Intensity of x-rays have been plotted again the angle of incidence. So we are getting corresponding to n equal to 1 and theta equal to 5.9 degree first maxima. Theta equal to 11.85 degree n equal to 2 we are getting second order maxima theta equal to 18.15 degree n equal to 3 we are getting third maximum. Now what we are observing from this figure the higher order maxima they are having less intensity as compared to the lower order maxima. As we can see higher order maxima are having lower intensity than the lower order maxima. Now why it is so happening? According to the equation 2d sin theta is equal to n lambda. For higher order, this n lambda will be greater than equal to 2d. As we will uh, seeing here from this equation, sin theta is equal to n lambda by 2d. For higher order, the value of n lambda will be greater than equal to 2d. Now this value is, if it is increasing, n lambda is greater than equal to 2d, it means sin theta is greater than equal to 1 as sin theta is equal to n lambda by 2d. As we are seeing this equation, sin theta is equal to n lambda by 2d. If n lambda is greater than equal to 2d, then sin theta is greater than equal to 1 and that is not allowed. So, no solution exists when this n lambda is greater than equal to 2d. Thus, for higher orders, we will not get the diffraction pattern. Light will pass without diffraction for the higher orders by the crystal planes. So, reflection of higher order will be less intense than the lower ones. Now, what was the experimental setup used by Bragg? The X-ray diffraction apparatus used by Bragg in the study of crystal is known as Bragg's X-ray spectrometer. Using this, the intensities of reflected beams corresponding to different values of the angle theta were measured. Now, what are the various steps involved in this method? First of all, X-rays are generated in X-ray tube A by bombarding cathode rays on a target metal T. And these generated X-rays are passed through a slit and filter so as to obtain a narrow monochromatic radiation. The beam is then allowed to strike a single crystal C. Here this X-ray beam has passed through the slit and filter so that to get a monochromatic radiation and this monochromatic radiation is allowed to strike a single crystal C placed on a turn table T here. This turn table can be moved over a circular scale. Now the reflected beam is passed into an ionization chamber D containing sulfur dioxide gas. These reflected rays ionize amount of sulfur dioxide gas depending upon their intensity. So more the intensity of X-rays, more will be the amount of sulfur dioxide gas ionized in the ionization chamber. Now this extent of ionization of gas is proportional to the intensity of X-rays. And how it is measured? It is measured as intensity of the electric current produced in an electrometer 
connected to this ionization chamber. So the electric current produced will be directly proportional to the intensities of reflected X-rays. Now, how the procedure is done? The crystal face is rotated by rotating this turn table T and changing the angle of incidence. To receive this reflected beam into this ionization chamber, the chamber is rotated through double the angle through which the crystal face is rotated. First we will rotate this crystal face, this crystal on the stern table so that to get the beam reflected by the plane of the crystal. And for that position suppose angle is theta. Then we will rotate this ionization chamber by an angle of 2 theta to get the reflected beam. For a particular crystal phase, there will be a set of theta values which will satisfy Bragg's equation and for which the intensity will be maximum. These values will correspond to the different values of n corresponding to first order, second order, third order, fourth order, diffraction maxima. Now knowing these n lambda and theta values we can easily calculate the d4 successive planes of one type in a crystal. The plot of intensities of diffracted beam for various angles of incidence is drawn and from the graph angles corresponding to first, second, third maxima can be noted to determine the value of d. As from this graph, we can easily find out the value of theta corresponding to different values of n. For n is equal to 1, its value is 5.9. For n is equal to 2, its value is 11.85. For n is equal to 3, its value is 18.15. So these are the first, second, third maxima occurring at an angle of 5.9, 11.85 and 18.15 degree. These values were obtained by plotting the intensity of reflected rays and angle of incidence for 100 plane of sodium chloride. Now the sign values of these angles were found to be 0 0.103, 0 0.205 and 0 0.312. And their whole number ratio was found to be 1 to 2 to 3. When we are uh, calculating their whole number ratio, we will find out its Whole number ratio is 1 to 2 to 3. Now this suggests that first, second and third maxima occurs for n equal to 1 to 3 respectively. As the value of sign of these angles is having the ratio of 1 to 2 to 3, it, it means these are corresponding to first, second and third maxima occurring for n equal to 1, 2 and 3. So what does it suggest? Bragg's equation is correct. So it is the evidence in favor of Bragg's equation. From this uh, figure we can see the ratio of sine of angles is giving the ratio of 1 to 2 to 3. Which suggests that the Bragg's equation is correct and proved here. Now Bragg's equation uh, is determined in terms of DHKL. How we can express it in terms of interplanar distance between higher order planes. Now as we are seeing here in this equation n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta. So we can write here lambda is equal to 2d by n sin theta. Suppose this d is the distance between the planes having Miller indices HKL. So we can write here lambda is equal to 2 into dhkl by n sin theta. Now we very well know that the distance between the planes having Miller indices nh, nk and nl will be equal to distance between the planes having Miller indices hkl divided by n. So putting this here we can write here lambda is equal to 2d nh nk nl sin theta where 
dnh and kn and l is the perpendicular distance between the adjacent planes having miller indices nh and k and l that is n times the miller indices of planes having uh, interplanar distance dhkl so this is a interplanar distance between the planes having miller indices hkl and this is the interplanar distance between the planes having miller indices nh and kn and l so what we can say here for a particular plane of crystal which is having miller indices hkl it is more convenient to express the higher order reflections in terms of first order reflection from the planes with higher hkl values what we are saying here we very well know higher order reflection they are less intense as compared to the lower order reflection the first order reflection from various plane is the maximum intense so what we are trying here we are expressing the higher order reflection in terms of first order reflection from the planes with higher hkl values for example higher order reflection from the plane dhkl that can be expressed in terms of first order reflection from the plane dnh and k and l as we can uh, take your example that is second order reflection from a 111 plane will be equal to the first order reflection from 222 222 plane so higher order reflection can be expressed in terms of first order reflection from the higher miller indices plane in this case we will get the intense peak in case of higher order reflection we are not getting the intense peak now what are the various uses of the bragg's equation what are the various parameters parameters we can determine from the bragg's method first one is the calculation of interplanar distance in the crystal we have already discussed about this bragg's equation is n lambda equal to 2d sin theta and d is equal to n lambda by 2 sin theta so we can easily find out if we know the value of n lambda and sin theta we can easily find out d for the given planes of the crystal now for first order reflection we can put the value of n equal to 1 and if theta we know corresponding to n equal to 1 and the wavelength of incident x rays is known the interplanar distance can be easily calculated now second one is calculating the edge length of the unit cell once we will determine the dhkl value the interplanar distance between the planes we can easily find out the edge length of the unit cell of the given crystal thus knowing the value of dhkl the edge length a of the cubic cell can be easily ca calculated by using this relation if we know the dhkl we can easily find out the value of a so edge length of unit cell can be easily determined similarly we can also find out the value of lambda if we know the various other parameters if we know the first order reflection the angle of theta as well as the distance between the planes we can easily find out the value of wavelength of the incident x rays so this is all about the bragg's method in the next lecture we will continue with the powders method for the extra diffraction by crystals